and welcome to the studio. If you are new to this channel, this channel is all about custom painting. I'll be moving around from custom builds, I'll be in a booth at times, I'll be sign writing. So it's all about custom work, whether it be paint, vinyl, materials like timber, I do it all sort of thing. So today's video we are moving on to the back onto the e-bike build. I've been in the booth for a couple of days. Now I've had a few pieces turn up. We're doing the suspension forks for the e-bike build today and we're gonna be doing some custom painting on these to get them to match the frame. So I'll give you a little pan round, show you the bits that we're gonna use, talk you through some of the materials and the prep work that we're gonna to need to do on these forks before we start painting. Right guys, you can see we've got an array of pieces on the table. I'll talk you through these bits in a minute, but these are the forks. These are a brand new set of double crown forks for the e-bike build. They're a fat bike fork, so you can fit a four and a quarter inch fat bike rim in between the, the uh, bottom legs on this. Because I'm going for the fat bike style rims on the actual bike, these are the forks I've chose. These are a 26 inch fork, double crown. You've got all your dropout adjustment, all your adjustments on the top to do your rebound and settle that. So that's what we're painting today. The actual bits that we're going to be using first off will be to prep. We've got a Scotch Bright, I've got a 500 disc. Because these are powder coated, we're going to key all the pieces we need to key up, like the two crowns we're doing there and the actual leg pieces here. So I've got a Scotch Bright for intricate bits, 500 disc to flat out, smooth out, and prep these up. Masking tape, just a standard inch masking. We've got a bit of fine line to get around some intricate pieces like the bottoms here and to mask out these pieces round here. These pieces we're gonna slide off. We've got mask the top pieces of these out, the adjusters, it's not a problem. So that's what we can use for that. Cleaning wise, we've got a degreaser. Kitchen towel, just to wipe these down with a degreaser. Pair of rubber gloves. Spray gun, we're gonna be using two eye waters today. We've got the Impact Junior air guns on, which is a um, one mil setup in this. So that's perfect for dropping the base coat down. We're going to be using the Iwata Takumi Eclipse for all the airbrush work on these. We've got a blowgun. If you've not got a blowgun, you can use your air gun. Just press in, you can blow down before you start spraying. Plastic cup, paint strainer, thinners, Ford Moondust Silver for the base coat. So that's all we need for the first stages of getting these into a base. And then we can move on to some airbrush paints. We've got just some out here, we've got a comma, we've got some golden, we've got some more golden here for some rust effects, different colours, but I'll take you through these paints when we come to do the airbrushing. So that's where we are, I'll stick you in some time lapses, I'll talk you through as much of this along the way. So if you are thinking of painting a set of forks, this is the process you, you could use to go along. So the first thing is to strip these crowns down, clean them up, Right, I've stripped the forks down, so I've undone the top two crowns, which is that piece here and that one. These are just Allen key bolts that hold these in. So I've took them out. Now it's a good idea when you're stripping something down to drop all your bolts and bits in a plastic container and then you're not gonna lose them. Nothing worse than stripping something down and losing the nuts and bolts as you go along. So. Plastic cup, vise, stick it all in, label it if you have to, so you know on your shelf in your studio or wherever the bits for the forks. So we're moving them out of the way. The next stage on these is to, because we've got a little bit of grease on these legs, we're going to clean all these down in wax and grease and rhubarb. So paper towel, give these a spray over like that, nice and simple. Clean them up. Just get the grease off, like so. And keeping your work clean as you are. If you're a painter, it's really advised just to keep wiping your work down as you go along. It keeps all the grease and contaminants off before you come to spray. So that's them parts wiped down. That will do for those. These pieces here, just to wipe down.
nice and easy. That one. So that will do for the first clean down on these. As these are new anyway, they're clean. Just wanted to get any finger marks and grease off. So that will do for your clean down. The next stage on this, we're gonna do some masking. So I'll need to mask out this tube here to keep it clean. The rest of that is gonna get painted. On this one, we're gonna mask out these internals here. So I'll do the same to this one as well. I don't want to get a paint buildup on the inside of this because these slide down these tubes and there's nothing worse than getting loads of paint in here. And then you'll just scratch the tops of these legs. So we'll mask the internals out there on both of these and on this one, that tube there. So that's what we're going to mask on that one. This one, we're going to mask the bottoms of the legs You've got the valves here, so we're going to mask them little bolts off there. We're going to mask the actual leg parts out here, all this will be masked. And then we can paint, what we need to paint is these legs on that bit. So I'll stick them in the time lapse for this bit on the masking, then I'll talk you through the next stages. Right, there you go, that's that stage complete. We've got all the masking done. I went in and just masked the internals of these, both sides. Masking tape on the inner and then just scalpel round, tilt the, the, tilt the scalpel blade so you're coming in on the edge so it just gives you a sort of clean edge. You just want to keep the paint, as much paint as you can, off the internals of these. Because if you get a build up, you won't be able to slide these over the two legs. So they're both the same, masked down. Bit of paper on that tube there to keep the paint off. On the legs we put the paper and the masking round these pieces here. And then we've masked out the pieces to the bottom. And any of the little bolts where you mount your disc brake, I've just screwed some masking tape up, pushed it in the hole and that just stops the build of paint up going into the threads on there. We've got one on there as well. So that's, that stage complete, nice and easy guys. Couple of minutes, job done. So you're now ready for prepping. Now the next stage I would do is give this another clean down of wax and grease and remover. With some gloves on now, give it its final clean down before we prep and sand this down. And then once this is sanded down, we will clean this down again. So I'll stick in another time lapse. You'll see the cleaning down, the prepping side. I'm gonna go in with a scotch bright on the intricate pieces round here and then on the bigger pieces I'm going to go with the 500 disc and just key this up so enjoy the time lapse enjoy the music got all these prepped up. You see me in that last time lapse, went over with the 500 disc, knocked back all the surface and then just went over with the grey scotch, round the intricate bits then back over the legs on the two crowns. So these are all good now for base coat. It's got a keyed surface. You've got something for your paint to adhere to. So the next stage is another clean down. This will be the final clean down now. Then we can blow it off and get some base coat now. So just a nice, wet coat of panel wipe, wipe over the pieces again. So nice and straightforward, dead easy guys. Just keep your work as clean as you can through your processes of paint.
and then I'll take you through some stages of mixing a bit of base coat. That's basically a solvent base. So we're gonna mix that with a 2K thinner. So once you've cleaned your bits down like that, get yourself an air blower. You can use your spray gun. And then just give your pieces a blow off like that. and that will be your pieces ready for painting. We're gonna to have to mount these. I can hold this one and paint it. This one will mount it. We'll sort that out in a moment. Same with the forks. I'll probably mount these and clamp these to the edge of the bench like that. So I can just get around them and spray them. So I'll see you in the next step. We'll get some base coat mixed up. A bit of base coat. I think this might be pre-mixed in this tin. We'll have to have a look, see what the consistency is like it is quite thin. Might just need a little drop of thinners. So we're not going to need a lot. Drop a little bit of the base in there. And that will be more than good enough to paint these little bits here. Got a bit of thinner. Drop a little bit of thinner in. And I go by, I know by the consistency on what it's going to paint like. And that should be absolutely fine. So we've got a bit of paint mixed, nice and simple. Use a strainer, strain that into the gun. I've got the pieces mounted up, I've got the forks, so they're good to go. We can hold this piece. And I've just bolted a piece of bar through that piece so I can hold this and paint this as we go along. So the next stage will be painting these up, giving them another blow down, and we'll get some base coat on these. So I'll see you in the next time lapse. we've got the base coat down. Nice couple of coats on that, you've seen that in that sort of real time. Just blast it on, solvent base, dries nice. I went over, I didn't get it on camera, but I went in the hair dryer after and just cooked it down and just dried it off. So we've got a nice coat on all these parts. Now the next stage on this to do, we're gonna do some airbrushing textures now. Dead simple to get like a steel look. You've got your silver base down. You can use any silver base. I like Ford Moondust Silver in a can, so I'll just use that. And that's what's got on the actual e-bike frame. So a nice coat on that. Now, the paints we're using now are acrylics. We've got some golden high flow blacks. We've got a gray com art. This is a black com art, but it's basically like a, a very washed out black but we can use that. Grey Scotch Bright, and we've got a little piece of texture. These were um, placemats that you'd use on your dining room table. I found some of these years ago, and it was like a web design. They were like £1.50 each, so I thought that'd be great for some textures. And that's the one that I've used on the frame for doing like the rust parts and things like that, so we'll use that one. 
The airbrush we're using is the R Watt Up Takumi Eclipse. Be brilliant for dropping this down because it's good with the paint flow. Probably running about 22 psi, nothing high on this. And we're just going to first go in. This will probably need cleaning out because it's not been cleaned. We'll just try it with a bit of paint. No, nope, we're good to go. That's what I like about the Takuma. This brush hasn't been cleaned out and straight away it's firing up. So to start the textures, you go in with like a wet coat first because you are dragging this off with your Scotch Bright. It doesn't have to go down nice and even. You're just basically getting it a dust on like that. So it's wet and then you are dragging the paint off like that. So just go round. This will be the first pass. You won't see much on this pass. And you're just dra dragging the paint off in lines and it gives you like a brushed steel effect. So that was the first pass on that. That's really light with that colour. So what we'll do is we'll drop a bit of black in. And this one you'll see a lot more quicker. So you're aiming for something like that. Just darken it off all the way around. So, nice and easy. So just sort of like a nice, light, even coat all the way around. So you're aiming for that. So you've got a wet coat all the way around and just let that sit for a minute and go off. So we'll just prop that one up there somehow. Hopefully that will prop up, that's fine. That's probably gonna fall off the table in a minute, but it'll add some more textures if it does. So same again on this one, just dust it on. So you're not aiming for something that's going to look really pretty, you are just chucking the paint on guys. It doesn't matter if you've got streaks, lines, even if you get a little bit of a run, it doesn't matter because you're going to be dragging this paint off in a minute. So a sort of washed out, there's bits that are darker, there's bits that are lighter, doesn't matter. That will do on that one. So we'll prop that one up. Just there, go back to the first one, get your scotch by and just start to drag the paint off. Try and stick to one way all the way around and it'll look a little bit more even. that one across the top, like that, and you can go back in, and we will be going back in again in a minute. That's the beauty of using a solvent base, because you're not scratching off the solvent base, you're just taking back the water base paint, which will come away a lot easier. 
So as you can see, we're getting that sort of texture build up now on this. So that one will do. Grab this one, same again. And this is exactly what I did on the frame. Same thing, just went round and done this and then just built the textures up. Dead easy. So we'll do another pass. That'll do for that one. A little bit more on this one. That'll do. Right, we'll go straight in this time with the Scotch Bright. Just get them textures in. And try and keep your way you're scraping consistent. That'll do. So I've got the steel texture down on that. Now that looks like proper steel. We've like a little bit of grain in it. It's just tainted it back. So that looks a lot better. It looks like more of a raw steel look. Dead easy. Nice and simple to do, guys. So that's that one. We'll just run the scotch back over this one. And you're basically just scratching back through. You're not going in too hard scratching. You're just putting some light lines in and it's knocking it back and it's bringing that silver back out. Nothing like working on your knees, guys. So again, drop your black in. Doesn't matter how it goes on because you're going to be scratching it off. We've even got some runs on this, it's running, doesn't matter. So you can even do that, it doesn't matter. Because you're going to be dragging this off for the textures. So you can literally get your scotch bright and run it through. Doesn't matter even if it's like that. Because once this dries, you can start sharpening bits up, dragging more off. Because you will always pull, you'll pull the water base off before you'll pull the solvent off on this and just drag it down right so right guys we have got the pass on the forks so that's all done we're now going to add the texture part this is a little bit awkward to do so we've got the black still And we're just going to add a little bit with the texture stencil, just in some certain places. A bit more black. do this on camera and show you what I'm doing at the same time as trying to balance and hold a pair of forks. A bit down here. I'm not going to go too much on this because I'm going to put some logos on this as well. So we've got a little bit of the texture on there. Not loads, just a little bit, it's just enough. Now we'll move back on. We'll drop on to the colours now. Just 
stain a little bit of that black. And as you can see, I'm not I'm not cleaning the brush out. I'm just mixing the colours straight in. Just give that a little bit of a back back mix. So we want some dirty, like rusty type colours. I'm just going in, adding a little pass on that. You can see that nothing hard to do, guys. Just to drop in a little bit of the colour, and that one, if you can see that, that's the first pass on that. So that one will do on that one. Same on this one. So we've got a little bit on there, perhaps picking that up, you can see that, just the textures and the colour on that one, so that one will do on that colour. Move on to the forks, same again, just over where the textures are. Some little dagger strokes down, so the rust runs the filter and ran. So I've got the first pass on the fork, so you've got the runs at the back. Nice and simple. We'll go in with the next colour. So I'm going to go in with, just going to grab a sepia, bit of sepia, drop it in there, give it a back mix, and go in with the next colour. Just darkening out in spots. So that's that one done. Got the texture on then, then that will just match up to the frame. Nice and easy, move on to the next one. We're just adding a little bit of texture and darkening off. And that was an orange oxide that I put down on the start. So the sepia, when this sits over the top, just gives it that real rust effect color. That's that one done. Nice and quick guys, just adding a little bit of colour. Move on to the forks. A little bit more detail. That'll do. So that's then done. We've got the logos to do on these next. So we'll have a logo down each side of the forks and then these three pieces will be ready for clear coat. So nice and quick guys. And as you can see, I'm not even worried about it. The paint being touching the surface. If it makes a mark and a dink on it, it's more textures to the actual theme of the bike because it's sort of a beaten up, rusty, Mad Max type looking bike anyway. So the more textures, the merrier. But that was some metal effect, dead easy. Go in with the Scotch Bright. You drop your silver base down, blast on some black, let it dry down for a bit, and then just scrape it one way and it puts your lines into your like sort of silver and it gives you that sort of brushed steel look and then when you go over back over again lightly just knocks it back and makes it look like more raw steel went into the texture ten texture stencil which was that one in some random places we dropped some orange oxide and then i just went in with another color with a sepia job done that's as far as I'm going with the textures on this, that is more than good enough. It'll match the frame up 
as you'll see later on in these videos when we get this build put together, it'll all blend in. So the next stage is to get some logos done. I've got two Owens logos to go on the forks. They're like I'm gonna be in a candy blue and a candy gold. So I'm gonna get them cut out. Now how I'm gonna do that is I've got the image on the laptop screen. I've sized the image up. I'm just gonna put a piece of the um, art tool mask over the laptop screen, draw around, get the outline, and then get a stencil cut out with a scalpel, chuck it on, two colours, job done. Right, so I've got that bit on the time lapse. Basically, laptop, got some of the art tool masking film, and we've got the logo. This is a two colour logo, so we're going candy blue and we're going to go candy gold. So I've got to cut this Olin's logo out now on a stencil, off the stencil, cut it out. Nice and neat, as neat as I can get it. We can add some textures through this as well once this logo's on. So I will stick you in a time lapse next. We'll get this one cut out. We're going to use one stencil for both sides so we can peel this on and off and just get this logo down nice and easy. So see you in the time lapse. little time lapse I've placed the masking film onto the laptop screen but you didn't see that bit nice and simple it's basically a transparent film with a low tack one side so you can see through that put it onto your laptop screen draw around the image that you need to stencil out to make a stencil off and then cut it out with a craft knife so we've got it here on the table We've got two of the outer, so that one's going to go on first, drop the candy blue in, then we're going to put the text in. We're going to drop a bit of the silver base that we used over the top of the candy blue, and that will give us a base for the gold, and we'll go the gold on top of that. So that's how we're going to do it. I'll stick you in a time lapse, bring the forks up. I've got some of the candy blue mix, just need a teeny bit of candy blue. We've got the PS290, it's got the spot cap on it. We'll just dust in, get a base for the first part of this logo on the forks, and then we can move on to the candy gold, reposition the logos and work on from there. So I'll stick you in the next time. goes down give you a little pan round so there you go we've got the candy blue and the candy gold Olin's logo on the forks now I've just got to repeat this on the opposite side so I started off with a mask that had the big centerpiece cut out I dropped the candy blue in and then put the Olin's logo on there leveled it as best I could inside there then dropped some silver and then went in with the candy gold. And that just gives you that two-tone logo. We're gonna do some textures around this and just do some edges on this to make the logo pop out off this edge a bit more. But that's how it's come out. That's how I wanted it just to match across to the frame. So one more that side and then these three pieces will be good for clear coat. So stick in on the time lapse. We'll do the same again to this logo and then we'll get these into clear. See you in a bit. All the logos complete, they're in, the textures are all in, the rust colours are in, guys, I'll give you a little pan round. 
and we're ready for clear coat. So this is the finished piece. We've got the Olins in candy blue, candy gold going up the forks, one that side, and then one round to that side. Got all the textures in. Didn't want to go too much heavy on the textures, there's just enough there. We've got the brushed steel look on there, and we've got the beaten in textures here, round here. There's bits round the back. So that's on the fork legs. Then you've got the brush steel to the crowns, top and bottom. So that one would sit there on the forks and blend in, nice. And then this one goes to the top where your bars would be at the top and your stem. So these are all ready now for clear coat. The next stage to do on these would be to just give them a little wipe down with wax and grease and move up because we've been moving them about with the hands. Give them a quick wipe down, have a little check round. If there's any bits that need touching in, just grab the airbrush, a little bit of black, and just drop some black in here and there on the textures, job done. So we'll get set up with the clear coat. I'm gonna use the Impact Junior again. Couple of coats of clear, not too heavy, just to seal this off, give it a bit of gloss, seal all the artwork in, and we'll be good to go. So I'll see you in the next step. we are all complete the forks and the two crowns for the forks about two coats of clear coat i'll give you a little pan round they look really nice now i've got a drop of clear on so that's the olin's forks with the candy blue candy gold and then you've got the textures the steel effect and with that being candy you can see through like a transparent you see the textures going through the logo inside there we've got the rust effects coming round and you've got the Olin's logo again this side, rust effects coming across. Then you've got the two crowns that are cleared now. They've got the textures in to match the forks on both of them. I've demasked masked the inners where I take the inners off so they'll slide nicely over. You've got no buildup of paint. Same with this one. We've just demasked them two pieces there so they'll slide on. That's the actual bottom. So from the top of the bike, you'll see this side. So there's more textures and effects on this side than there is on that one, because that's right at the bottom of the bike. So that's it for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it on these double crown forks for the e-bike. I hope you can join me in tomorrow's video when we sort the front wheel out. We've got to get the logos on this. All the spokes are going black and the rim's gonna go black on this as well to match the rear. So we've got that to do. And I've got a rear mud guard as well, which is gonna be in tomorrow's video. So we're doing a front wheel and the new hugger rear mud guard that we've got, that's turned up. So we get them two custom painted in tomorrow's video. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press that notification. Give us a thumbs up guys, it does help the channel grow. It makes it more seen on YouTube and it gets more people viewing and coming across and seeing some custom painting. So thanks again and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.